Hi, Frank Thomas here. I uh, am going to record a video. I, I really enjoyed I had a chance to have um, uh, an hour of training with Marcus uh, late last week, and he really showed me the philosophy of um, automation through Windows. And lots of things, because I've done lots of automation with other packages, uh, especially on the web, and I had learned that there was a philosophy, there's a kind of way to do things, and um, it, this is no different. When I was, I've, I've you kind of used micro macro scheduler for some time now, off and on. Um, I purchased it about four or five years ago, when it was version seven or eight or nine or something like that, and now I'm up to version 14 now. And I kind of, I didn't use it for a period of time. I used it for about a year and a half doing different jobs, and I was trying to automate the web at that time. And I found at that time it just, for me, it wasn't the best tool for automating the web. Um, but I found it really effective in automating Windows, and I think that's really its strong point. And I eventually went to another package that its strong point was automating the web, but it doesn't automate Windows very well. So, you know, the right tool for the right job. You know, it, I haven't done any automation with Macro Scheduler or the Web Recorder in the latest version, so, you know, the jury's out on that for me. But to make a long story short, I thought I'd cut this video because, you know, Marcus brought out some really, really interesting things that really blew my mind again in the philosophy of how to use a program and this is really the, the hardest part of learning how to use something is not um, the automation the automation is easy once you begin to understand the commands and how to use them but also the philosophy the whole idea of how do I get from point A to point B let me show you here I'm uh, a user of the package called SE NUCAX um, and I wanted to take the automation to the next level because to create a campaign it takes a long time. It, you know, you literally spend 15 minutes building a large campaign. So I was like, you know, th this has got to, this, this can be automated. It's so, you know, click, 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 click. It really doesn't change very much. And so I started looking at it and I started going into it and I thought, okay, well, how do I do this? And you know one of the things that are shown in the tutorials and that is how to use the um, the commands to actually snap a picture, like you know snap a picture on the screen and you can click a button. For example, let me just show you what I had learned in the very beginning. Okay, so I just stopped for a second to make sure I had myself 100% here. So I'm going to be moving this off screen so I can do this properly. But basically, I'm going to go into Code Builders and underneath Image Recognition. I would click the image recognition wizard. Really great. You know, this is something that's entered into I don't I don't know what version. It wasn't in the first version that I started using, but it actually works really good. Uh, for example, what I would do is I would say, okay, what am I going to look for? I'm going to capture an image. So I know I've got to click the wizard button here. So I'll say I click that, and uh, where to look? I want to look inside the particular window, the Windows uh, SENUC XCR version, whatever. Now I know the versions change, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a star at the end here, so it can change. It's not a big deal. What to do when I found? I want to left-click the center of the image, uh, advanced. I'm just going to use the this, this standard settings. So I'm going to say OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this. Okay, because it's not exposed, it's not going to run properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this out of the scope here so I can see it. I'm going to click the Run Again off screen. Okay, one thing I did forget to do is I forgot to set the focus. Okay, so I quickly put in the Set Focus command just to ensure that that window comes up. So we should be good now. Okay, and you can see in the background here it's actually flashed up the uh, the window to allow us to actually create the campaign and that's what we want and I thought okay yeah, that's great you know but for me clicking an image is awesome and it's very simple to do but it always feels just a little bit out there to me you know and I said to uh, Marcus I said you know I want to be able to know that I know that I know that I've actually clicked the right thing and he says okay this is where he started teaching me the philosophy because immediately I was diving in I want to be able to find the handle of a dialog box and 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 do all these miraculous things and 
And he said, and he kind of stopped me in my tracks and said, "Okay, you're overthinking this." He says, "The first thing you always want to do is operate the application like a user would operate it, without a mouse." So that was really the first thing that really kind of struck me. Is there, in other words, is there a keystroke to do what I want to do? And he said, "You know, simply what you can do is click the Alt key and see if any of the letters." for any of the buttons highlight. So I'm going to click the Alt key, watch wizard here. See how the W is highlighted there? So we know if we click Alt W we should get exactly the same effect. So let's just give that a shot. What I'm going to do is I am going to remove, I'm going to basically comment out the code we have here. Okay and uh, then we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to get the focus then we're going to send some control keys, we're going to send the control W and see what happens here. Sorry I just had some minor problems there for a second. Okay, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to depress press Alt and I'm going to send text W I'm going to release alt and let's see if we get the same effect there okay so we're going to set focus and instead of doing the image recognition we're going to do the the actual keys here and exactly the same effect basically off screen here we have that window popping up I like that better because it, I know that I know that I know that um, you know, is it possible for the uh, macro scheduler to get lost on the screen, whatever? Maybe, maybe not. You know, sometimes I know on my machines that do the actual syndication for SE NUCACs, I'll actually have antivirus running, and sometimes a pop-up window might, you know, obscure this window. And if it obscures it, then it's no longer going to see that. Uh, even if I set focus, maybe it'll bring it up to the front. I'm not sure. So. I'm just covering that, you know, this is, I guarantee this is going to work like it's going to work. So that's really the very first thing he showed me was the fact that, you know, get to learn the keyboard shortcuts in Windows. You know, relearn them if you've forgotten them. Because that's going to be your friend above all else. Um, the second thing he showed me was uh, tabbing. So let's run this here and let's get, let's get to the, the screen that we want to go next here. Okay, I'm going to just minimize this a bit so it fits into the window here. So we want to set focus on this screen. So we're going to need to do a few things. We're going to put a little bit of a wait state in here. So we're going to wait, let's say uh, 0 0.5. And I'm going to then Okay, I'm going to wait for the window to open. I'm going to use the wonderful code builder here. And this is New Campaign Wizard, SCRX. Insert. Okay, I'm going to wait again. Uh, half a second. And we just have to see what's happening here. We have to see what's going on here. Um, we need to figure out where we're going to be. So one thing he said, you know, tab through the application because most applications you need to tab through it. So let's say we set focus. We go from here, we get set focus, and I start hitting the tab. I want to see when this here box has a cursor in it. So one tab, two tabs. So there's two tabs. Okay. Two tenths of a second. Okay. 
there. So let's actually just run through the whole thing here. I want to see it live. Okay, if we can see that it's flashing in there. And at this point in time we can enter some text. run it and see what happens. Okay, so that's great. So we got the first thing handled here, okay? Now, what's going to happen next? If I was using the keystrokes again, you know, I could start tabbing and see where it, it takes me. So tab again, one, I, and I could select, and one thing Marcus pointed out, if it's a checkbox, it's usually the space bar that will select or unselect. So we would send a space bar if I want to make that selected. And another tab, so two tabs. Now I got stuck here because I was so used to using the mouse, fixated on using the mouse to move things. I'm like, because once again I used an image and I sat down and figured out how far I'd have to click into the image. It took me about half an hour to figure out how do I get a two or a three from the number of profiles I'm running. And Marcus said to me, remember that most applications you might be able to use a space. Space doesn't work here, so maybe the right and left keys. And I was like, yep. That's it. That's the right key. So you can hit the right key or the left key. So we need to do two tabs and hit, let's say if I want to create two profiles for this particular campaign, I'd have to click the, um, the right key once. So let's do that next here. So I'm going to just get rid of this. Okay, I'm just going to put some of the code in here. Just give me a second. Okay, so I just put in a press tab times two and then press right. Let's see how that works. Ah, bingo, look at that. So we got the, the two setting. Now let's see, I also have to fill in some URLs and some keywords. So I will normally fill in one or two URLs. So let's say I'm going to do two. So how, where does tab take me next? Okay, so tab is jumping away. It's telling me that... Uh, so it's showing me a notification window. But it's taking me to the the next window here. So let's just do that there. Tab. So we need to say OK so we can continue on. So we have this notification window come up. So what I'm going to do is, I bet you it's got focus, so I'm going to wait. 0.5 and I'm going to just press the uh, the enter I believe okay and then I think it was one tab. Now then we know we're going to be on that window here. So what we can do is we can then fill in the first URL. So I'm going to say So let's see if we get what we want here. So I'm just going to close this one so we can emulate the whole process here. Okay, I'm going to press run. Okay, so we got stuck. And it's probably because we might have lost focus on this window because of that window popping up. So let's just go back here. And I'm going to make sure that we do have focus on that window. So 
let's try it again. Okay, now it's not coming up. Okay, yeah, maybe I've missed the sequence here somehow. Oh, I have to press the tab. That's what the problem is. That's what the problem is. So let me just pull that window back up here. And I annex it here. Okay, and you can see that we have a problem. So what's happening is here, it's actually just turned it, it filled in the first one right, but it's stuck in the extra HTTP in the second one. So let me see what happens here when you do it manually. So maybe I want to do a like a control, again, using keystrokes, Control A to select all and then paste it in. So let's do that because what's probably happening is when we're here on this control here and we tab, we say OK. Yeah, you see it's all selected. That's what the problem is. So let's get rid of this. And I'm going to wait. Zero point five. I just forgot the code for control. Oh, yes. So this way we can select all the text. Okay, we don't have anything else running. Okay, so let's run it again. Okay, so it's got those two in there. That's great. Now, next I want to enter some keywords. So I hit tab once, tab twice. Okay. Actually, I'll just get rid of that. I'm going to wait. run this again. Okay, so it's got those in there. And so the last thing I need to do on this particular screen is print it, print, just press the next button. Okay, so what happens if I hit tab again? Tab, 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 three, four, one, two, three, Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six tabs, and then I can hit the space bar. Bingo, okay. see what happens now. 
I actually want to make sure that we have everything filled in, so I'm going to wait one second at the end of that. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so it did take me to the next window, but it's also popped up this this window here. And okay, as soon as I move the mouse, it disappeared. So and it's possible because my mouse was just hovering over that particular box here. Yeah, look at that, just because the mouse was hovering there. So that's the reason why. So let's see what happens here. So the keyword one, keyword two. Now the title is important here. We need titles. So and this is the box right here that I'm looking at. So again, I'm going to go through the sequence of tab one, two, three, four, five tabs. See what that does for us. Okay, so we're in the right place. Okay, I'm going to close that. field down and let's see where we take off from there okay so I know this is needs to be a one I wonder if I hit the down arrow oh look at that down arrow so it's um, we know it's defaulting to three so I can just press the uh, the down twice and I'm gonna have a one there Okay, so let's just give this a shot, and I'll go into the last piece of uh, what I was taught here. Okay, we see we got the title, we got the number of links. I know that the next thing I'm going to want to do is click auto generate, but let's say in the last part of Marcus's philosophy, one thing he said was, you know, then we can use the the image recognition if you want to, or we can look for the dialog box. So, you know, if everything else doesn't work, maybe that's what we've got to do. So, let's go back here. Okay, so underneath of uh, cold code builders, there is the uh, send keys to object. Okay. Here we go. We've got the send keys to object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the crosshairs Oh goodness, we can't see it, so give me one second here. I'm just going to get some stuff out of the way here. Cancel. We need this to be out of the way, we need this to be in focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say do that again. Actually, no, I'm not sending keys. I want to send a uh, mouse movement. So, uh, underneath of mouse commands, mouse action. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate. Okay, we can do it a few ways. We can do it with the XY coordinates for the whole screen. I don't find that reliable. What happens if it's in the wrong place? set relative to the active window again if it's a different size it could be wrong so I'm going to use the and we could use the image recognition I'm going to use the uh, localized window control by class name so locate and there we go what to do over there we're going to it 
left click insert code so let's just run this and see what happens I'm going to get rid of that, I'm going to put this back into the screen here bring this over here ah shazam look at that so perfect and that was really the three big things that I took away from the the whole lecture that uh, I had with Marcus or the training session I had with Marcus the first one was simple make it simple and in making it simple try to use keystrokes second was if keystrokes aren't using like you know if you haven't, can't use alt keys or control keys or whatever then use tabbing to get to the dialogue that you want and don't be afraid to use weights like you know half a second weights or tenth of a second weights because sometimes the application might need it then he said two sometimes depending on the application you know you can't do this star six or star five you'll have to press tab wait at half a second press tab but it really depends on the application and you can usually step through the application the same way even if the version of the application changes uh, and get to what you need and you can continue on doing what you're doing like just doing this you know and I can continue off after pressing the auto generate to getting to the next one here just again by pressing the tab and when I, we did that I found it to be so 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 easy it was just it was ridiculously easy to do this once I had learned all these things so really that's what I got as a takeaway I hope this helps you guys I hope that if you're learning how to um, do automation through uh, macro macro scheduler that um, that this does help you because I found it was just once he had shown me his philosophy in going through these different steps not only is the code easy to read going down the road I can see what's going on because like, this really does look like gobbledygook to me like you know exactly what am I clicking um, and I would probably put in something here pressing the auto auto wizard generate button there and you know that's the only way I would know what exactly what I did later whereas I can see the actual sequence of what's happening here and you know you can take this and do whatever you want with it at that point in time so once again hope this helps and uh, thanks very much this is Frank Thomas we'll talk to you later